Let's go. I'm in the groove. This is my third take. Hello everybody, my name is Nerdiversal. Welcome back to another video. Um, it is with great remorse and great sadness that I announce that I'm back. You know your bitch couldn't miss the Halloween season, so here I am with a YouTube video about Halloween spooky stuff. For today's video, I'm actually gonna be talking about uh, cryptids and monsters from urban legends and from stories around here. So the first one we have is the Fresno Nightcrawlers and they're basically just like um, walking pants. I'll play the clip for you right here. So like I said, they look like pants. They're actually pretty short creatures. They're theorized to be a uh, 4'9". They've actually been sighted in Fresno and Yosemite National Park. But the crazy thing about this is, is that they say that it resembles the Caramel Area Monster. And what the Caramel Area Monster is, is um, I don't know if you guys have ever seen Silent Hill, but it's that creature that, you know, walks around like that and like has muscular legs and like rib cage, no face, you know, whatever. So what I'm thinking is that the Caramel Area Monster and the Fresno Cryptid, but if it's the same monster, then that means that the Fresno Cryptid actually looks like the Caramel Area Monster and not like pants. And the only reason that we don't, the only reason that we think that it looks like pants is because of the bad footage that we got. Because if you look at the footage, it's not very good. You know, uh, surveillance footage is just like, you know, it does the bare minimum. So what we could actually be seeing is that creature with the legs and the head, but it's just not detailed enough to see that. And that's what spooks me because when I was younger and I used to hear about the Fresno uh, Nightcrawlers, it's like, okay, well, these aren't that spooky because they look like pants, but they could actually be terrifying Silent Hill creatures and we just don't know it. And God, do I never want to know that. It's actually theorized that it's an alien rather than a monster because I mean, look at it. It, it looks like an alien. Like I've never seen a creature on here that looks like that. Like at least Bigfoot, you know, kind of mammalian, but that's like, there's like not much skin, there's skin, there's skin, there's nothing but skin and there's bones, but it's humanoid. And that's why I think that it could possibly be an alien. And that's why I think a lot of other people think it could possibly be an alien. So the next one I have for you guys is Hachishaku-sama. Hopefully I pronounced that right. I'm very sorry if I didn't. Basically what she is, is she's an eight foot tall woman in white. Generally her pictures just depict her as a woman with a long white dress and a wide brimmed white hat. She's got paper white skin, the long black hair, you know, the creepy works. It's said that she has a deep masculine voice and that she repeats the phrase po 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 over and over and over again. Um, let me actually play you guys a sound clip from that. So that's what she sounds like. I could never mimic that, but honestly, that clip by itself is a lot creepier uh, just because it doesn't really sound like uh, a noise a person would typically make. Another part of the legend is that if you hear her, you might die kind of like Banshee, Banshee. Yeah, if you hear her, you'll die and it's like a prophecy or some, some shit like that. And she actually inspired similar stories like The Grudge, uh, Samara, you know how she has the long white dress and the long black hair. Uh, basically, she was just another uh, urban legend of all these creatures that like to steal kids. You know, Mexican culture has La Llorona. She steals and, and she steals and kills kids, but I think this one does too, so. All right, the next one I have for you guys is Indrid Cold, otherwise known as The Smiling Man. And if that name doesn't terrify you already, um, I don't know what else to say. But basically, he's kind of a humanoid. Um, you know, he's got that kind of, well, okay. From the descriptions, it's definitely a lot more than an uncanny valley. So they say that he has no nose, no uh, ears, no hair. And I don't know if you've seen Voldemort, but imagine him with like a giant smile that's just not pretty. He's actually really tall too. He's six foot tall with a green suit. Um, he's actually theorized to be part of the Men in Black. The only thing that kind of detracts him from the Men in Black is the fact that he has a green suit and not a black suit. The Men in Black, I don't know if you've seen all the other conspiracy theories, but basically the Men in Black are supposed to be um, almost alien-like. Like, they don't look like humans, they just wear black suits and they go conduct their official business, which is crazy because the thing with Men in Black is always supposed to be that they're against these conspiracies and against aliens and stuff like that, but what a lot of the theories say is that they are aliens or they're not human which is insane. 
He also has small black beady eyes that are set really far apart. So all this combined with the giant smile just creates nightmare fuel. All right, so the first sighting was in, um, actually, give me a second. I got my little notes right here. Uh, he was first sighted in October of 1966 in New Jersey, where a couple was chased by this thing. They were chased by him until eventually they lost him, which honestly is good. You don't want to be abducted by an alien that has a giant smile. The second sighting was a guy who was driving along a road and he saw a crashed vehicle, except this crashed vehicle from the way he describes it doesn't look like a vehicle at all. He describes it as looking like, I believe it was an old fashioned uh, fire lamp, which basically just kind of looks like a vase. And I don't know if you've ever seen cars before, but um, they don't look like vases. And so what he did is he, he, he got out of the car and he goes up to him and he says, hello, my name is Indrid Cold and i am here to survey humans as if that sounds normal at all and not alien like at all but that's where he gets the name injured cold as opposed to just the smiling man which is what he looks like and also the third sighting was this family they were actually having kind of um like supernatural happenings to them and what they thought is they thought it was a poltergeist but one day this girl she's sleeping and she's part of the family of course she's sleeping and then she sees it looming above her like i wouldn't want a regular man standing above my bed staring at me in the middle of the night let alone the smiling man who has no nose no eyes wait he has eyes no nose no ears no hair and a giant fucking smile is terrifying it's worth noting that these were all generally in the same area the first one was in new jersey and the last two were in west virginia i don't know what the time period was between uh the second and the third sighting but between the first two, uh, it was only about a month. So the second one I have is Lydia's ghost. This one's actually kind of a little bit sad. This girl, it's not really known whether she was in high school or whether she was in college. She was coming home from a school dance and on her way home from the school dance, she got in a really horrific car accident and she died. And a couple years later is when people started to see sightings of her. So they would see this girl and she's walking along a bridge and as you do in the 1920s you pick her up you take her home different times you never know so they would take her home and according to the story she would they would actually get to her house and they would knock on the door and they'd be like hey is lydia there and she basically has to explain to them here's lydia she died three or however many years ago and you just brought her home the ghost but I think that's the really uh, terrifying part about this is that she's kind of stuck wherever she was at. They say that the main place to cite her is what they call Lydia's Bridge, which is basically where her car accident happened. And so my thinking is that she's stuck at that same bridge and she just wants to go home. Like she's just coming home from a night of dancing and just wanted to get home after a great night and she had to go and die. And now she's stuck on this bridge they named after her death for who knows how long this actually took place in jamestown north carolina so if you want to look this up you can if you know anything about this and all this is completely wrong let me know that too but anyways i hope you guys enjoyed this video um i love making halloween content it is what drives me and if you guys have any suggestions on stories you'd like to hear things you'd like to see or art related content anything in general it doesn't have to just be halloween go ahead and leave it down in the comment section below um and if you like videos like this go ahead and hit subscribe wherever that is i don't know i don't pay attention to video layouts as much as i should but yeah go ahead and subscribe go ahead and send me a like anyways thank you guys for watching hope you guys like this video love you guys bye